Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to my shabby craft studio. I'm Martha and I appreciate you being here. Hi. So, um, in my last video, which is called Faux Handmade Paper Part 2, I um, showed sort of the basic same things that I showed in Part 1. So, I'm sorry if some of you were bored. Um, but then I played around a little bit with something after I was done uh, recording. And I had made one paper with, um, I don't know if I can find it because they're everywhere, with tracing paper. And I really, really liked the way it came out. I used the tracing paper on the bottom. And then I used... The napkins on top and that's what it came out like so hopefully you can get a good view of this and that's the front and that's the back and I really liked the transparency of how you could see everything through the back of the tracing paper because tracing paper is um, it's opaque but it's it's also um, What's the right word? You can see through it. <laughs> so this is napkin on top and tracing paper base. And this is the tracing paper. So that got me to thinking. <laughs> and you know that's usually uh, okay. Um, it can sometimes mean trouble. So what I did was I did a tracing paper base and then I put another piece of tracing paper on top instead of napkins. So this one is a little curly. It's all dry, but it's a little curly. And I love it. And you know how sometimes you want to make a pretty background for something? Or you want to um, make an envelope or your own paper bag? or just a pretty pocket, well, guess what? Glue sticks to tracing paper. Unlike vellum or document protectors, ask me how I know about the document protectors. I work with them all the time when I make the folios. Um, the tracing paper, you could fold over, you could crease it, you can um, glue it. Now, I haven't done a project with it yet. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. So I made this one, but as you can see from the two corners that don't meet up, can you see that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't get the top piece on very straight. But if you're going to cut it up and use it for something anyway, that's okay. So I wanted to show you what I did because it's a little bit different than the napkin technique. And I forgot to turn the sound off on my phone, so excuse me. Um, so... Um, I just wanted to show you what I did. Now this, you, you do, you, trust me, you need to tape the edges down, the corners. Just the little corners here, but make sure they're down pretty good. Um, because this tracing paper will curl. Now, I will show you the tracing paper I'm using. I am using just regular 9 by 12 25 pound weight tracing paper. I have a heavy duty tracing paper, which I have not tried yet, but it's going to be thicker. You're not going to be able to see through it as well. So um, I have not tried that yet. I just thought about that actually. So, but we're going to play with this. Now I do have, when, when you're playing with any of this faux paper technique, it's a little bit tricky because um, the... Glue dries really, really, really fast. So you have to sort of be quick. Well, what I decided was, because this curls up so much, and because I have to glue another piece to put on top of it, I was going to put little bits out and hoping that that'll help me work faster. And I'm learning that my glue, if it's really, really wet, um, I know... Natasha at Treasure Books used, I think it was three parts glue and one part water. I just looked at the directions again, but I don't measure. Um, I just have 
Elmer's glue and water mixed in there. So, um, but it is really watery. I mean, like it's, 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 it's runny watery. So I, I think you can see that. Oops, slop. <laughs> oh, it's just glue, Martha. Okay, so I try and work from the center out and I try and work really fast and I try to make it really, really wet, which for any paper is going to buckle it some and it's going to make it curl. So um, this is... This is a do it quick and be prepared <laughs> technique. So there you go. And of course, washi tape doesn't, oh my goodness gracious me, really? Washi tape doesn't really um, always, you know, stick really well, but I just have a little bit on the corners and I'm standing here talking, pointing things out. So this is the tea. This is, this is tea. And it's just, I drink tea. I don't drink coffee. So this is just um, the grounds from the dried tea bags. I put my tea bags in a little glass bowl and don't bunch them on top of each other or they'll mold instead of drying. <laughs> and then I, I cut open the tea bag and I, okay, that's enough of that, quit talking. And, um, cut open the tea bag and I dump out the um, tea and I save the tea bags to tear up and use on other things like this and collage. And this is some flower petals from an azalea bush that um, somehow it blooms. I thought azaleas only bloomed in the spring, but this one seems to bloom in the fall. And um, so these were the last of the last of the hurrah of that bush so, put that on oops oh I know I'm going to spill something because I'm trying to rush here and then beautiful leaves just going to put a cup I wish I could pick them up and then um, I have some tea bag already torn up which I usually just sit here and try and tear little pieces <laughs> off. <laughs> Meanwhile, the glue is drying quickly. So I thought, Martha, tear it ahead of time. Oh, what a concept. So my, my previous video, which um, you haven't seen yet as of this recording, because it's currently, um, I did a little bit of editing, not a lot, a few captions in there. Um, but I... Um, I'm currently up, uh, uploading, downloading. It's saving from Movie Maker to my computer. Well, it's on my computer, and it's it's I edit in Live uh, Windows Live Movie Maker, which I don't know how much longer I'll be able to use that for editing, which makes me sad because I finally have it down pat, <laughs> and. Um, I don't have a Windows 7 computer. I have a Windows 8. And so I'm hoping that Windows Live Mo Movie Maker... I know with Windows 10, um, it's supposed to be not supported. I don't know what that means. I'm not a techie. Um, I think not supported means if something goes wrong with it, I can't get help to fix it. Um, Windows won't help me with it, but that's okay. And um, it's all good, you know. I have Adobe Photoshop. Uh, I have not learned to use the Premiere yet. And again, like I said in my last video, that's another learning curve that I, I'm just, you know, I feel like I'm too old. I know I'm not too old to learn. I'm too impatient because I'm, I don't want to sit and study things for hours. I want somebody to show me how to do it, and then I've got it. You know, like, show me how to do it. I, I am a very much hands-on, um, visual learner. And if you show me how to do something, 
I'm going to be able to do it. And then once I do it over and over, I've got it. But if it's, you know, out of a book, if it's out of a manual, if it's out of, uh, you know, written words, <laughs> I have issues. I, I've always been bad at that stuff. Um, school was not my favorite subject. And then I have some little, little pink threads. I don't know if you can see them. Little variegated pink threads that I'm going to throw on here. I'm sure I have purple somewhere, um, but I don't know where, and I didn't want to go looking for them. So, <laughs> so there. And you can see my paper is bubbling up ferociously here, which kind of is the frustrating part, even though I've taped it down. It's, oh, can't pick these up. It's um, bubbling up quite a lot. And that's because of the very wet glue. Um, otherwise, it doesn't really stay wet enough for things to stick to. And that's okay. Um, it's not a disaster if things if it's not wet enough for things to stick to. Because you can... Um, if you're using a napkin to cover it with, you can... You know, the, the glue will soak through the napkin and glue everything down. But this is a different technique, as I was saying. So I just want to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so now I have to, I have to sort of, and this is the biggest piece of parch, um, of freezer paper I have. I should have put it on a smaller piece. Not that I don't have smaller pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm going to, I hope I'm still mostly on screen and I'm going to very quickly, and this one I'm not taping down because I have to pick it up right away. This has to have a lot of glue on it because the glue will not soak through the tracing paper like it will a napkin. It's not as porous. Um, I have to, ooh, no, don't curl so much. <laughs> I have to glue. Oh, Lordy. Please. Please get out of my way. Okay. So this has to be pretty wet, and it has to be glued well all over. So it's it's a bit of a management issue. Um, there you go. All right. And you pick it up, and you got to put it down, glue side down, and you got to line it up. So I just drag it there and try and get this bottom edge all lined up and the side edges lined up and hope for the best. And then, and you know, once I make digitals of these, if you want to, I know I can do it on my Epson Eco Tank. It's not an Epson Eco Tank. Oh, Martha. There you go, dreaming again. On my HP refillable ink, you know, you get it in the mail. On my HP printer, I can cut tracing paper down to 8.5 by 11. That's US. And I can put it in my paper tray, and it will go through. Um, I only put one sheet at a time, <laughs> but you know, it's really fun to print stuff out on tracing paper. It makes it light and airy and crinkly. And, you know, if your machine is okay taking it, it's a fun way to print things out. So I can see I'm off, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, maybe somewhere here. I'm trying to get some of these wrinkles out. I'm trying to get this to smooth out a little bit because it does get really, really bubbly, wrinkly, and I'm trying to get them to adhere to each other. Um, and this is the first time I've tried the, the paper towel. It's a, it's a two or three layer paper towel and it seems to be working well. So I guess that was a good thing. It was close by, and that's what I grabbed. I could also use another piece of the... 
shiny side down um, freezer paper. So just and and I have a um, roller thingy, but it's down in the basement. And again, I did not think about going to get it before I did this. And I like using my hands. I can feel what's going on underneath it. And my hands create a little bit of heat. And sometimes that helps. So, well, there's still some wrinkles, but I don't know that I can help that. So this is going to go over on the heater. I had to turn my heater off. It's um, not hot here today. It's supposed... <laughs> We had snow on Tuesday. I'm in Virginia. We had snow on Tuesday, about three inches. Um, it's supposed to be 74 tomorrow. <laughs> and it's February 9th, <laughs> 2020. Just so you know. Um, so yeah, so that came out really... I think this is going to be so pretty. I mean, it's so much fun and so addictive. You just don't want to tear this paper because you're, you're not going to... You can't really, well, you could, I guess, but it would give it a different texture. But um, you can't really, um, like, patch this paper like you could if it was napkin on top. Napkin, you just glue a little piece of napkin on top, and it sort of patches any little holes. So, I mean, hopefully I got enough glue on all of this to stick it all together. If not, I can probably fix that afterwards. So this is going over on the heater, even though I turned my heater off. And I'm right here. I'll be right back. So I had this sitting under a couple of books for... The last, oh, how long have I been on? Almost 20 minutes. And it helps straighten it out just a little bit. Actually, I straightened it out a lot because it was really curly before. Now, there are still some bubbles. Um, I'm sure probably there's a different technique you could use. Um, maybe, maybe you could Mod Podge over this stuff. I don't know. I haven't tried that. That's that's worth a try. But I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a perfectionist. This does, I'm okay with wrinkles. <laughs> this does not bother me. <laughs> so I really like that because it's really quite visible from both sides. Now you can tell this is, you know, one side. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm excited. Now, the only person I watched on faux paper doing it um, like this with the napkins over the top was... <laughs> Natasha at Treasure Books. This has the napkins over the top. And this is the one with the butterflies I did in the last... See the butterflies? In the last uh, video. And I absolutely love it. Love the texture. Um, don't know if I would go over this again. I think it would depend on what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to leave it and not go over it again. This was done on heavy copy paper and it has two napkins on it I have used two napkins so that already has two napkins over the top of it um you it, if I were going to use it for a cover or journaling cards or something that was going to get a lot of wear and tear I would probably collage page or more glue over the top or something to give it a little more um toughness and sub substance so um yeah i am absolutely loving this process but i'm gonna have to start moving <laughs> moving on to other things i really need to stop um i did say in my last video that i did start organizing and i'm not a hundred percent done with that yet but i feel a lot better about the way things are than i did um, and I think, oh, come on, you can do it. Um, 
once I get more organized, um, which means I do have to move my printers next to my computer and move my sewing machine over, and we may do that this afternoon. Once I do that, um, I am going to um, get busy sewing and get busy with scanning. And so those will be the next things happening. Um, it's the weekend already. I try to put in at least a couple of hours on the weekend. I do not work eight hour days in my studio most days unless I'm under the gun to get something done. Um, I do have to pull out one last, the last journal I finished for the customer who wants me to send it to someone. Um, I'm not going to keep these, but I'm going to keep this one because it does have some of the, I'll have to cut that off. It's interesting how those napkins glue together. Really sealed it, look. That's like not coming apart. <laughs> but this does have some of the butterflies on it, so I'm going to, I'm just going to cut apart where this, hmm. I want to save as much of that. I'm very frugal, but I can see where I'm going to have to start pulling apart more napkins. <laughs> oh, honey. Mr. Honey. You're going to have to... I never call my husband Honey. His name's Tony. He's Italian. Well, he, he wasn't born in Italy, but he's uh, third, third generation on his... Uh... No, he's second generation on his mom's side. They were just talking about that last night on the phone from Italy. So he's full-blooded. Then he married me, the 73% Irish girl. But I wasn't the first one that uh, got married into that full Italian family, so <laughs> I got teased a lot about it by the family. So yeah, so I'm really, so here's the difference. This is copy paper with napkin over the top. This is the tracing paper. Flip it over can't see anything through the back of that one you can see right through this one I mean can you see paper bags being made out of this little little bags or a little envelope I'm trying to decide what I want to make with it <laughs> I think I'm going to scan it first though before I make anything and I might scan it onto tracing paper because then you'd still get the crinkle that's even more crinkly and fun than regular tracing paper. So I just wanted to share that with you, um, the whole the whole experimental process. I'm going to scan all of these and make a whole digi set out of them. Um, I know I cut up one already, and I didn't think about it. <laughs> but these are all different and um, yet similar in some ways. This is a very fall-looking one. I think uh, very autumn, autumnal, and this one is more springy, summery. I think, and um, let's see, do I have any of the others? What do I do with the rest of them? Yeah. This one's very autumnal as well, with the cream background, and I really like that one too. And this one is kind of fun. Guys, hey. Guys, excuse me. This one is really fun, too. This was on cream-colored um, paper, copy paper. And I really like that one, too. So, different ones. I'll probably do... Gabby, please. I'll pro That's the little dog, the one that snores all the time. Um, I She's the most vicious. <laughs> I say that. She's really not vicious. She, she's never snarled or bitten at anything. The funny part is she's uh, loud. That's what she is. Not vicious. Just loud. Um, ooh, that's got glue on it still. So I am really having fun, I, in case you couldn't tell. So, yeah, I'm going to do another one similar to this because I really like... I don't have one like this. Um, this is just on white white heavy copy paper so I'm going to do another one similar to this with the napkin and I'll be scanning these and the one that's over there on the radiator radiator oil heater thingy majiggy 
And so these will be going pretty soon into the shop, um, hopefully in the next week or so. So many ideas and so much work to do. So I guess while I'm here, um, and I have a, a little bit of time, I have all of these um, pages I've been putting napkins on. And my husband has been tea dyeing like a crazy man. I, I tell you, you give him a task to do and he does it. You know, he just tea dyed a whole uh, pack of ledger paper for me. And it's flattening out underneath. But these came out. Look at those yellow roses. I just, I'm just in love with the yellow rose napkin. Those came out really nice. I guess they're all upside down. So these I will probably use my stamp scissors and cut them out so they look like all different size stamps. Um, and I'll be using some of those in some upcoming journals. And I can use whatever I decide to print. When these become digis, you can print them out on tracing paper, any weight coffee paper, whatever your machine will take. Card stock, you could cut them up and use them as background. Do it on really light copy paper, um, like 20 pound copy paper. And you can tear them up and use them for backgrounds, for collages, um, stuff like that. And I, I think that's going to be something that I do as well to create some other collages. Can't, can't do this because this book is copyrighted. Um, so I can't do that with these, but, um, as I said, there are some other things coming and I will be working with those and creating some more background collage digitals. And then that'll give me backgrounds to use when I'm doing my digital design papers. So anywho, um, that's it for me for now. And I just wanted to add on this video because um, I had a lot of fun. And as I use these, I will refer back to this video. And I hope that this inspires you to go off and make some of your own and have some fun. Get those napkins. I am going to be selling the napkins that we stripped all the backs off of. I'm going to be selling those, um, except for the ones I want to keep to use myself. <laughs> Yeah, there's that. And I will be um, letting you know when this stuff is available. So keep an eye out on my Etsy shop. The link is below in the description box. Um, it is called Shabby Craft Studio with a capital S, capital C, capital S, or uppercase, however you grew up calling it. Um, and I'm on Etsy. I do not have a Facebook page. But I am on Instagram under my name and under Shabby Craft Studio, but I usually post under my name. So I appreciate it if you join me. Thanks, everybody, for joining me once again. This was a shorty, but that's okay, because the other one was a longie, and it was quite chatty. So <laughs> I just wanted to finish out this process and show you all what I came up with. I Like I said... I don't know if anybody else has done this between two pieces of tracing paper. Probably because I'm not that original. I'm not that brilliant. I'm not that bright. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, um, what do they call it? You know, genius as far as coming up with my own ideas. But I have not seen another video on it. I did not go searching for another video on it. I just figured it out by playing all by myself. The other thing you could do, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is you could take the tracing paper. You you could. <laughs> oh, here they are. You could take the tracing paper, right? And take one out and tape down these two corners, glue half your paper, put your sprinkle all your little plants and stuff on it and then fold it over, you know, glue this side, and then fold it over. And that would probably work too. You'd have a smaller piece of paper, but who cares? You know, then you make that half, pe that half sheet. That would make a pretty envelope. You could make two pockets out of it. You could make, you know, probably three journaling cards out of it. It'd be fun to use. So, and again, you can glue on tracing paper. You can't glue on vinyl.
So again, thank you so much. Love you guys. Hugs and kisses. Happy crafting. Have a wonderful, wonderful year 2020. Bye guys.